Hi, so in this demonstration I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot some connectivity issues that you might find with uh, with deploying a ZPA connector and, and walk through how to, how to kind of look at this and uh, figure out what's going on. So um, I've got a newly provisioned connector. I'm just going to SSH onto it. Uh, 192.168.1.24 um, and you know it's all up it's all up and running just got booted up got a DHCP I have uh, config minus a shows me uh, it's got an IP address the 24 um, SM minus RN I've got a root um, out to the internet uh, resolve.conf tells me that it's able to resolve uh, using the name server 192.168.1.2. So I've got connectivity out to the internet with a bit of luck. Uh, it's important that that resolver um, is able to resolve both the internet and my internal namespace because the connector needs to be able to talk to both the internet and obviously the applications you're going to access. Um, configurations do exist for um, you know, split brain DNS or, or where you've got uh, uh, dual, uh, dual horizon DNS um, internal and external namespace being the same so there's our configurations for that I'm not going to cover that in this session so the first thing we want to do is we want to be able to make sure that we can connect to the internet so dig um, any dot broker dot prod dot z path dot net um, that gives me um, the uh, broker redirects um, actually from a connector standpoint it really wants to be able to connect to co2br.prod.zpath.net. Um, this is from the this is uh, the connector out to the broker. Uh, it's going to give me a, a bunch of other things um, to resolve to. Um, essentially, the same results. You know, we're going over to to Dublin here for my connection. Um, so so good. I've got connectivity. Um, the first thing let's take a look at system CTL status ZPA connector. Um, and you know what this is um, telling me. We we'll put minus L for the long one. Is it seems to um, have started up, um, and it seems to have a connectivity problem. Now, personally, I know exactly why this connectivity problem exists, um, and it's well worth looking at these logs before you start provisioning. It's it's the health check that the connector process is going to go through on connection. But invariably, we don't do this. We just drop the provisioning key on and think, "Hey, it's going to work." Um, and and let's 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 go through that process, and we'll come back to this in a second. Um, the reason why this is failing is because my firewall is doing some SSL inspection. But I want to um, run through a couple of other things before I get to this um, specific problem. Um, so let's take a look at the administration interface uh, and the connectors and we're going to go through and, and actually provision a connector. I've got a bunch of things here but I'm going to add a new connector um, and we're going to use the um, a key, uh, sorry, we're going to create a new provisioning key um, and the key is going to be signed by my intermediate um, 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 connection, uh, intermediate that one. Um, and they're called server and client. I've, uh, we'll come on to and I'll show you the, 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 the chains in a second. But I'm using um, custom PKI on this. If you weren't using custom PKI, you'd have a, um, a, a certificate issued by the um, connector intermediate certificate from, from Zscaler. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new connector group. And this is going to be called uh, London. London, and we'll give it a location. Bizarrely, it's going to be called London, um, United Kingdom. Uh, there we go. Uh, very important that we fill all this data in um, because this is going to be used for some of the geolocation stuff we do later on. Um, so this is going to be London um, provisioning key, and we're going to say, hey, we can we can have a hundred of these. You know, we're going to scale up to those. At some point, we might add and take away. So a hundred uh, seems fine for me, but um, invariably this should be within your license limit. Um, and we're going to go across and save all of that. And this gives me the connector provisioning key. Um, I'm going to copy that to my clipboard and click done. Um, so we, we've got all the provisioning keys here. Here's my London one. I can always come back in here and copy it. Um, it the signing certificate is the intermediate here. 
Um, let's just take a quick look at those um, uh, at those um, certificates, the enrollment certificates here. Um, here's my root CA. Uh, my root CA, you know, it's warning me here. It's coming up for for expiration soon. Um, uh, and and here's my my two intermediates. My intermediate um, that's going to issue the serv the, the the connector certificates. And my intermediate is going to issue the clients or my Zscaler apps. So it's worth understanding a bit about the, the PKI that exists here, both in terms of the connectivity, because client certificate authentication happens between the um, connector and the cloud, but also between the um, Zscaler app and the cloud as well. So PKI and understanding that trust relationship and certificate verification goes on um, to ensure we get that zero trust connectivity. Um, so those are my certificates um, that are that are in here that are issuing those certificates um, out to the clients and the connectors, and I've got my provisioning key. Now, invariably, what um, what a lot of people do um, is drop the connection uh, connector provisioning key straight in there. So let's take a look at um, uh, opt zscaler var directory. Um, And um, often what people do is just um, um, vi uh, slash opt zscaler uh, var slash provision underscore key. Um, and it won't write. So you know, it's important that when we're dropping these keys in there, we're doing it um, as the right user. So the first thing we need to do um, and you can do this in a couple of different ways. Um, you want to make sure that you sudo um, when you do the vi um, etc zscaler var slash provision underscore key. Because um, we want to be root when we're doing it because the permissions need to be there. So, so now I can input the key um, and I can write and quit that file. Ah, now I seem to have a problem with with writing that that file um, and that's a that's going to be a real problem so let's um, let's go and take a look at this um, CD opt zscaler var should be writable and um, the var directory is owned by zscaler um, which is the uh, which is the user we are logged in as, um, not sure why it's not writable. And it's invariably because, um, potentially because of the upgrade process, um, anything like that. So let's think about, let's just run a, um, a yum update. Um, in fact, let's start with systemctl stop zpa connector um, and cd var i provision underscore key. And write the file. We've now got it. So the file has been written. We've now got the provisioning key. Now it's owned by root. Now this should mean that we can system CTL start ZPA connector. And what's going to happen when we start the process? Um, the, it's going to read the provisioning key. Key. It's going to encrypt it. It's going to send it to the cloud. It's going to join the cloud. Get all of its client certificates. And we should be good to go. Um, so let's take a look what's gone on. So the provisioning key is still there. Um, and that tells me there's instantly a problem. And we're still stuck at this connection failing. Um, it's done the DNS resolution. We, we can see that here. Um, if we dig, if we dig that, we can see it's resolving correctly but it can't connect to um, the distribution server, which is necessary to get its updates, um, because it can't make the connections to co2br.prod.zpath.net. Um, so let's see if we can understand why that is. Now the distribution server, dist.private, that's where it gets its updates from. CO2BR is the, 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 um, the broker or the Zen that it's gonna connect to. So let's, um, take a look at what that connection looks like. The easiest way to do that is OpenSSL. Um, let's go OpenSSL, S client, minus connect. So we want to connect to 
co2br.prod.zpath.net. Um, and um, I'm going to connect on port 443, because it's TLS. And I'm going to give it a server name because it's important um, to understand what's going on with the connectivity and everything. And my server name will always be my domain name, which is welshgeek.net.c2.prod.zpath.net. Now, here's an interesting thing. I got a connection, but I didn't get very much else. I did a, um, you know, I did a TCP three-way handshake. I got a connection. Exchange certificates, no problem. If we did a curl, https curl slash slash co2br.prod.zpath.net. Um, it just kind of connected um, and nothing much else going on. Uh, minus K um, ignores any certificate errors going on. That's kind of weird. Um, Let's um, go to an actual command line that I've got running here actually on my machine and run the same commands. So open SSL s underscore client minus connect co2br.prod.zpath.net colon 443 um, minus server name co2br.prod.zpath.net Oh, I missed something. It should be so welshgeek dot welshgeek dot net dot co uh, dot c two dot prod dot zpath dot net. Okay. Now in this instance, I've got the full certificate back, um, and it and it tells me a couple of things. Let me just expand this out so you can all read it. Um, so you know the certificate chain um, for the connection has come from. Um, Emerging technology Z scaler, um, and the the certificate that's been provided, um, it tells me was issued by my domain controller. Um, there's a there's a bunch of certificates that have come through in the chain. My intermediate one, my client one, and my server one, um, that are that are provided down to the server um, to be able to trust for the connection. So, this tells me that the certificate that's being returned to the connector is different to the certificate that's being returned if I'm going direct, if I, if I was on the raw internet connection. And the reason for that is there is something in between the, prop, the, in between the connector um, and the internet which is doing SSL inspection. Um, and it's breaking those connections. So we need to go ahead and, and think about how we, how we make those changes um, and, uh, and invariably, you know, fix that fix that problem um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that um, and, uh, and we'll come on to the next session